Hi, welcome back to Every Note Counts. Today I wanna to talk about a new purchase I made. I ordered this Marshall Bluesbreaker reissue and I just received it yesterday and was super excited to, uh, to play it. But then I received another package and it was a package that I did not order. I was not expecting it to show up but it arrived at the exact same time as the package that I had originally put in an order for. So I obviously really wanted to try out the new Blues Breaker reissue, having never even played the, uh, the original, but hearing so much about it and having so many circuits that seem to be based on this modern classic. I also understand that these have been sold out at a lot of locations. And so the idea of being able to get on a waiting list and go ahead and get mine in a timely manner was really exciting. I thought to myself, I'll go ahead and get on that waiting list because a lot of people are gonna be waiting for these. Uh, they may, Marshall may even have to make multiple batches and I'd love to be part of that first batch. A lot of you had the same idea and I inadvertently received 12 of your pedals. <laughs> I ordered one pedal and was inadvertently sent a shipment with 12 more. So they arrived in, in uh, two separate uh, boxes, obviously one a small box for my Blues Breaker and then a bigger box, which was clearly like a pallet probably delivered from Marshall to this company I purchased from online. Uh, and they <laughs> accidentally slapped a label on it and sent it to me. So this is a unique opportunity. This is a chance to run 12 blues breakers through each other and see what kind of sounds we can get. This is a chance to cross compare and see if the circuits sound different from one another. This is a chance to see what happens if we throw one off of a roof, uh, run over one with a car how many strikes with a baseball bat it takes to get to the center, how they might sound with different aged batteries in them, fresh batteries, medium drain batteries, very old glitchy batteries, what kind of sounds we can get from there. Or I could send them back. And that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I contacted the retailer and I said, hey, you accidentally sent me a, <laughs> maybe a pallet is too big of a, a, a term, uh, but you accidentally sent me a, an entire shipment, an entire box of, of 12 Blues Breaker circuits. And they said, you're kidding. I said, no, it's, uh, it arrived here on my, on my front porch. I've got 12 extra Blues Breaker circuits. And he said, I'll let me get with shipping and see what we can do. So they are sending me a return label so that I can get these 12 pedals back out to you guys who ordered these circuits. I want these to get back into your hands as quickly as possible. So the shipping label should arrive in my time tomorrow and I'll package them up and ship them out so that 12 of you can get your pedals as quickly as possible since they are sold out in a lot of places. But what an interesting situation to have unfold. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna go through the, the different tones of the Blues Breaker circuit. And I'm also gonna give a sneak preview to some of the other Blues Breaker styled circuits that will be comparison videos forthcoming. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get too far into the actual sound demo, it did come in this black box with the sleeve over it. So it just says vintage reissue blues breaker on the outside. You open up this matte black box. The pedal is obviously inside here. It's now on the pedal board, as you see. Oh, what's that? It's right next to the more blues crab. That would be an interesting comparison video. Forthcoming. What's that? It's also next to Brown Amplification's carbon pedal, which is based on the blues breaker circuit. That would be an interesting video. And what else? There's also the Brown Amplification Protein Pedal, whose left side is 
a blues breaker style circuit, just like the carbon, I might just come out with all of those videos in the next few weeks. Okay, but back to the blues breaker itself, blues breaker reissue little booklet here in plenty of languages that I do not speak. It does say it has a area for a nine volt battery. We have gain, tone, and volume, which are written on the pedal, as you can see down here. Gain, tone, and volume. So for this video, I'll be playing the Fender Vintage 2 61 reissue acoustically. No, I'm just kidding. I'll bring in the volume here. Uh, here's what the neck pickup sounds like. Fourth position. Bridge. I wonder who those looks are modeled after. Okay, let's, uh, oh, I'm playing through my Victory V140. I believe it's in the 30 watt mode. And I've got it a little, just a little crispy. You just heard the guitar on like three different settings. I don't need to keep playing it to demonstrate that. Okay, Victory V140, let's click on the Marshall. Is everything at max? I'm going to adjust that. Okay, volume is all the way down. Everything is all the way down. At unity, it's pretty low. Low, low gain, low tone. Highly muffled. Let's get kind of an even tone here. Interesting. Okay, so the blues breaker is taking away some of the, the really high, uh, or I should say at least just the, the higher frequencies. Here's the tone maxed with the gain all the way down. It definitely added some body in there, some mids but took away some of the high end. Maybe that will change as we increase the gain. Let's bring the gain up some. Definitely get some of those higher uh, frequencies back. So I'm gonna bring that tone down some. Okay, so volume, volume's at nine o'clock. Tone is at nine o'clock, gain, is just past noon, clean tone. That's bridge. Fills that out a little bit, but there's still plenty of top end there. Okay, I like that. Let's, let's go back to the neck. I'm a neck guy. You should see my wife's neck. Definitely fuller. Comes in with a some little bit fuller push. Let's crank the gain and see what this thing's capable of. Just the volume to compensate. Tone is way too bright.
Wow, that's crispy. Oh yeah, gain is maxed, tone is at noon, volume is at noon. Fourth position. That sounds squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky blues breaker. I don't know if the microphone's picking that up, but that is squeaky. No one, no one plays with game maxed out unless they're like fuzz user though, right? So this might not be a great example of how one would actually use the blues breaker. Back on the neck. Back on the neck. Okay, let's put it more in a usable range. Back that gain down. Whoa, that cut, the, the amount of, of, I don't wanna say saturation, the amount of gain that kicks up between nine and nine o'clock on the dial and maxed, pretty significant. When you dig in there, <laughs> I don't know about finishing it that way. Oh. That's, that's nicer. Okay, so yeah, it, it lets you kind of dig in a little bit to get that, to get that grit. Try to do a video of Hendrixisms. I think I might just do videos of Mayorisms. There's certainly overlap. Sadly, Mayor is more culturally uh, relevant. I say sadly just because John Mayer is amazing. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Mare fan. Just Jimi Hendrix, oh man, he's, he is great. This is a cool pedal. This is a cool pedal, I like it. It's big. <laughs> and there are a lot of Blues Blake, uh, Blues Blaker, that's a word. There are a lot of Blues Breaker clones out now. So is the reissue a pedal that still has relevance in the marketplace today? For nostalgia's sake, certainly so. I believe these are actually less expensive. Okay, so I crunched some numbers. <sighs> Based on the quick research I could find, these were selling for about 130 American dollars brand new in the mid 90s. And based on inflation, that would bring them up to around $280 today, I believe. So these are still made in the UK. They are still made with the same components from the same manufacturers that Marshall originally sourced their components from, unless that company no longer exists, in which case they have to go elsewhere. For all intents and purposes, I think it's the same pedal. So that's awesome. Really excited to get to experience that. They didn't even fix the, the volume problem. Apparently on the old ones, you had to really turn up the volume to get Unity, and I've Certainly been playing around with the, the gain and tone knobs, which changes where I want the, the volume control, but supposedly that problem is still present in this pedal because they stayed faithful to the original circuit. 12 of you out there will be getting these pedals 
And it's super funny that they all got shipped to me. You're probably on a waiting list to get it immediately. I'm going to get it back to the company as quickly as I can so that they can ship it out to you. I'm sure you don't want to wait for another batch of Blues Breakers to be made uh, by Marshall in the UK. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, make every note count.